Good morning, Internet. I hope you are enjoying the appropriate time of day. Because today we are starting <coughs> a bit earlier. And there is lots of stuff to do. So... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, let's quickly look at what we've got to do today. <clears throat> Last time we made ourselves a te test fixture for um, proper test randomization <clears throat> and um, heap. Uh, and checking the heap for leaks and so on. And today I I want to improve on that a bit. <coughs> One thing we did the last time is um, we built in some logging. <coughs> Sorry, for um, for the randomization seed. And I thought a bit about that and I noticed that um, a potential problem is the logging that we have so far um, initial, so, so we initialized the randomization at the beginning of <coughs> a unit test executable and we logged uh, the seed we use for randomization. The problem is that this only works as long as the whole test executable uh, runs the same tests in the same order and <clears throat> Google test supports something called uh, test filters if you only want to run a single test for example or only a subset of the tests in an executable you can do that and this will of course affect the randomization um, as it is currently implemented and therefore what I want to do is I want to have the opportunity to um, snapshot the randomization seed at the beginning of each test and if a test fails to report this individual seed that was used only for this particular uh, test. So we have an easier time reproducing test failures that for example are, <coughs> are reported by the Visual Studio Test Explorer or some other uh, context where we might be using uh, test filters. <coughs> So, um, <clears throat> this, um, sorry for my voice problems, I don't know, maybe my, my allergies are particularly bad currently. Currently, <coughs> we are calling random init only if we did not call it at all and we, we are initializing based on time. So I think <coughs> I want to have something like, first, the first thing I want to do is I think I want to return the seed that was that we used from random init the second thing i want to do is <clears throat> i want to reseed at the beginning of each test that does not initialize the whole random number generator i want to uh, Reseed the generator and let's see. This receding 
<coughs> should should not introduce new entropy because I do not want the run times of the individual tests to change the seed. So what I will do here is just to <coughs> generate a random number and use that in turn as the seed. So actually, let's um, let's make us a helper function here to make things cleaner. For initializing the mycent twister based on a given seed. And we will do the same here. <clears throat> and now in the, in the um, In the test fixture, we can do the following. If the random number generation, gener uh, if random number generation is already initialized, we just reseed and get the, the seed for this test in this way, otherwise we initialize. And now we will actually <coughs> store this seed. Actually, let's just... Um, Let's just store this in a member variable, I think, of the fixture. <clears throat> and, and now what we need to do is we need to react to tests failing. Um, so we will install a listener for events of Google test. <coughs> I read up a bit about that. So let's search for a listener here. <coughs> I need something like that. I'm just not sure which event we need to listen to exactly so let's see if we can find more on this uh, test event listener So on test end sounds sounds promising. Maybe also on test part result. <coughs> Not yet sure which which is the right one.
Okay, this is <coughs> not exactly what we want. This is what we want. Okay, I think, <coughs> sorry, I think what we need is this on test part result. on test parts right so let us we, we first need to create a listener class <coughs> and install it so the listener class <coughs> I will put it into an imper namespace here. We will derive it from this empty test event listener, which actually completely implements the, all the virtual uh, member functions that we need. So we really only need to override this on, on test partial result. And let's see <clears throat> what is the clean way to check. I think this can probably cast to boolean, but let's check that. Uh, the test part result. Where is the test part result? Have we already missed it? <coughs> is it in a different header? Maybe in test part? Yeah, it's here. And okay, it has a boolean <coughs> failed. That's what we need. So if result is failed. Let's actually call this um, report on fail, on failure, listener. If result is failed, now we need to report something. And this something 
will typically be uh, probably just a seed. <clears throat> and now, of course, as, as I'm working with the API of Google Test, I'm drifting a bit more into C++ land, so I'm I am considering using some C++ conventions here now and maybe even creating a constructor. So creating a constructor that takes the seed and initializes this <clears throat> maybe something like this and so in case of failure we will print I, I think the better choice for us is to print the standard out strangely because standard out is much um, be because currently we use Visual Studio and in Visual Studio Test Explorer for standard error uh, we only get a single line, the last line that was printed to standard error, which is crazy, but um, I currently don't know how to change that. And so standard out is simply easier to um, easier to look at for us. Even though this would be a typical standard error thing that we want to print. And we want to print the, <coughs> the test and the test suit name. We can get this from Google test. <clears throat> so let's um, get ourselves the instance <clears throat> of unit test. I think it should be just a pointer, uh, but let's let's take a look. Yeah, it's just a pointer. So they have this kind of singleton pattern. <clears throat> yeah, we can get this pointer to the singleton instance. And I think it has a current test, current test suite, current test info. Okay, so <clears throat> Google Test already has some things for test randomization. We will not, not use this um, because uh, one of my goals here is to not become too dependent on a particular framework. I'm just using the framework to, to get started more easily now, but I do not want to get too dependent on it. So we will not use a more advanced infrastructure like that. We'll just do things that we could do with any other framework too. So we have current test info. And this in turn, I hope, has the name. Yeah, it has the name.
and um, we will also current test suite get the name of the test suite and we will report our test seed uh, to be safe we will flush standard out <coughs> Let's highlight this a bit. Okay. Um, and now what we will do in in the setup. So to keep with C++ conventions, we will also make ourselves a virtual destructor here. I hope. class has a virtual structure as it should have. I think I will always do this to make clear that this is a top level namespace that we are using here. And now in the fixture, we will register this listener and we will unregister it at the end. So which unfortunately means that here in the, we will need to store it here. So test event listener pointer Yeah, this is something we really should we will that's the problem when you start when you start to you to use C++ APIs, then you are dragged into all this <clears throat> all this C++ stuff that I actually want to mostly avoid, like having to do no longer having plain old data and having to do constructors and all this stuff. Um, But let's keep it localized to this test utility stuff that we have here. So as soon as we have the test seed, we will construct this listener And we will add, add it to the unit test <coughs> in, uh, to the unit test listeners. So unit test listeners. And I think it has a, an add function. A append, okay, append function. And when the teardown is finished, we will uh, release the listener and delete it And 
<clears throat> for debugging, let's also just print that this was called and Called success or succeeded. Past it's called. Past. So let's try out if something still works. Because we made lots of of mistakes. This should be called a variable seed. Oh, this is also in the <clears throat> in the header. So we need to fix the return type here. This is an imper. Okay, here we <coughs> we actually get a reference. It seems. Let's look at how they do it here. Yeah, this is a reference. So let's see. Do we get? Hard results. No. We do not get get them. So did we make some mistake? Uh, did we make some mistake in installing the listener? Let's see if this is actually executed. It should be. Yeah. It is definitely executed here in the long prefixes test. I mean, it could be that this is actually too late. If we install the, the listener in the setup setup function, because maybe Google test makes a kind of snapshot of the listeners earlier than that. Uh, 
Uh, let's see if we can find something out here in the in the source code. We have append release default result printer. There's an example here for building your own report, defining event listeners. I mean, maybe this is not invoked if the test simply runs through without problems. And here they install it very early in the main function. <coughs> So, but let's um, let's actually provoke a fail. As we did last time, uh, by messing up our array here. <coughs> Okay, so maybe the, now now we have the problem that our our checking code actually makes a hard abort. That's another thing to think about. So let's first let's do something much simpler. And let's just put a, a test here that fails. <clears throat> Actually, I should have made it an assert, so we, we terminate the test immediately. Yeah, now our, our listener is actually called. That's nice, and we get the report. Failed with test seed. Okay, so so this test part is solid it seems is not called is not called on a normal success so maybe what we want want is actually on test end
we probably want on test end. This one. And let's see, uh, we should have uh, in the test info, I hope we have the same pass fail information. Uh, we have a result. And here we have an uppercase passed, funny. Passed and failed. So it should work like this. Actually, I will call it because failed is a bit of a magic word for my code base. So let's call it test failed. <clears throat> uh, we can actually now we can actually get the name directly from the test info and probably the test suite also. Test suite name, yeah, we can also get this directly. That is a bit nicer. So we should still see it on a failure and now we should also get notified on a pass, which we do not strictly need here, but I think test end is better because otherwise when we have multiple failing checks in a test, we would be called multiple times and we do not want that. And now we just have the problem that we do not reach the test end because we have this hard abort. Hmm. Because this is done in, in memory itself, so we have we have a few <clears throat> cases where we abort directly. So let's first, as a first step, let's refactor this a bit. I think we actually want to have a A more general way in our memory handler to report problems. Uh, 
and we actually we probably want to make this configurable so we can have a custom handler for for reporting problems So we want something like a, an, an error reporting function that takes the memory manager and a format string and var args. Let's put this down here because that's not part of the user code interface. So what we will do is, is something that could be called dependency injection. So we will not depend backwards from our memory code on our test util or Google test code, what we will do is from outside we will inject um, we will inject an error handler, and if no such special error handler is injected, we will have a default error handler in, in here. can put this in debug impa. So we have here a, a default handler. And this will do something like this. This just the difference being we have now a VA list. We make a VA start and the VA end and we use VF print F, sorry. VF print F the standard error format VL. So we this is our default handling. We set this here. And everywhere, let's now use this. So we will every do mem report error function, and the first argument is now mem, and the rest can remain the same. This also mem report error function mem okay so the only abort that we have left is here and we will make ourselves in test util we'll make ourselves our own error handler This report memory error. Uh, 
In this case, we might actually print the standard out. As I mentioned, it's easier for us to get this. And we will not do the abort. We will do a nice uh, Google test thing. Um, let's see what they have with that. I mean, we could just do an assert, assert force or something, but they have some special stuff that you can use to um, to get better messages. So fail. Okay, we can do something like this: fail and probably it would be cleanest to to pipe the error message to it here but I'm this is too annoying now we, we could we could print it to a string stream and so on and then we could um, Let's put something like this. And so after we initialize the memory manager, we will actually set, uh, we will set the reporting function to our own implementation that does not do the abort. However, I think I probably still won't have want to do something We probably don't have varax here, that's another problem. So Heap memory overrun at end. Failed due to error reported by the memory manager. That is fine. But the strange thing is that our listener does not show up. And that's strange because our partial result listener was actually reporting something. Uh, so let's <clears throat> let's add again this on on test part result. Because this I already saw working. Yeah, this is called also here. That's fine. 
So maybe we should use this one in the end. I, I don't know why the test end. <clears throat> ah, probably. I know probably because the test end is probably invoked after the teardown. And in the teardown, we already unregister our listener. So the test end you only get if you install the listener on a higher scope. So either for the whole test suite probably or for the even better for the globally. And so far. So far, I think we have enough to get things working. Because why not? I mean, why not use that? We have it, it will give us redundant reports, but uh, that's not the worst thing. We have a current test info that we can use. Let's just call it test info equals uh, unit test current test info. And then our code is actually okay. I'm not sure if that will work. That's for now. We will clean this up later, but we get the unit test, we get the current test info because this is something we do not have here in the parameters. <coughs> test fail. Well, let's just try that. Okay, const is annoying me. And here, yeah, here I should now have like this. <clears throat> so we get redundant reports, but that's not the worst thing. It's working. So let's clean up things a bit. <clears throat> so it's maybe not the most <clears throat> elegant thing that we do here because we get these redundant reports, but the most important thing is that we get the seed. It doesn't need to be elegant. We need to see it in case of a failure. That's the most important thing. Uh, in the end, I actually also want to get the seed if we have a true abort somewhere in our test because it could be caused by an assertion or something. <laughs> Let's try a few things. So we know that this one this one works. So the next thing we will do is uh, we will trigger a crash.
So let's cause let's cause a crash. And let's the crash should actually be caught by Google Tests um, structured exception handling. Yeah, we have the structured exception handling catching this. And then we have long prefixes filled with test seed. That's great. So this works. Uh, the problem is if we do an abort here. I think this is not caught by Google test. Yeah, so we immediately drop out of the of the process. I think this is something that I will investigate off stream if there is a way to improve the situation here. So also with a failing assertion we should see the same problem just with a bit more reporting. Yeah, same. Same. Let's just check if we can if there's a quick a quick workaround we can do. No, there's no quick because the abort really is very hard. So the only way would be to catch the sick abort signal and I have no idea if that works on Windows. Could try. We could try to catch the board ourselves. Gets an int. Oh, We get a parameter, whatever this parameter means. That's for a time also. And in our setup, let us let us install this as soon as we have the listener in place. Let us install this for SIG abort. And 
do we get the old signal handler back? Yeah, we get the old signal handler back. So let's um, let's save this. So this is the saved signal handler. And this, of course, has a funky type. So it's a pointer to a function that takes an int and returns nothing. <clears throat> okay, and here, <clears throat> mm, yeah, before we remove the, the listener, let us uninstall, so let us install the old signal handler back. And let's include C signal. And let's see what happens. Woohoo! We caught a signal and we get the test seat. People, that is great. We have a huge success. This is very good. So we do no longer write this appending the blah blah blah. But now we have a nice situation because if deep in our code some assertion fails, we still get the the seed that was used for this partic particular unit test. And that's the most important thing. There's only one thing left to do. So test random, random. Let's print a random integer from our test. So actually now we will see if it works also if the heap, ah, we already checked that yeah, the heap, heap code that works because that anyway has now a custom handler attached to it. <clears throat> so we get uh, the heap error detected, error field, blah, 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 and we get the seed, very nice. And now that the final thing I want to do is I want an easy way to pass in the seed. So one thing that we already did last time, we have this forced seed variable that we can, or constant expression that we can use. Um, I just actually, I want to use this forced seed. I want to use this also hmm. Actually, I don't. I 
don't want to do that. Because the point is, what I want to do is I want to add a command line argument that we can use to pass in a seed. Maybe we can also do something like check an environment variable or something if this, this is more convenient. But I definitely want, want to have a, <coughs> a variable to pass in a particular test seed. And if we have that, we will, for all the tests that we run, we will always use this same test seed. So let's let us do the following. Currently, we don't have a main function in our unit tests because we use the one supplied by gtest. Let's see if we can make ourselves a simple macro like this that supplies our own main function. So we want a standard uh, main function. And we want to call our own test util main with arc c and arc v. Okay, my coding styles, I should pass them by reference, but I will actually pass them by pointer because I like that more. It's more explicit. And we will just return okay so that is our main but we actually want to to implement that here so this is test util main Int pointer arc c int um, character pointer 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 arc for arc v this will first do the init google test sorry And it will run all the tests like to do here. And actually the init Google test works in the following way that init Google why is it called it's not called init Google test. I think it's called init Google test. <coughs> Okay, so only the first one is passed <coughs> by pointer. So we actually pass it by pointer. The second one passed like this. And <coughs> the way it works is that it removes all the argument it knows. Um, the arguments it knows and, and, and leaves the, the ones it does not know 
there. <clears throat> so we just pass us by ourselves the, the arguments that are remaining. And I actually don't know if it will remove the program name argument. Uh, let's see. Let's, further, let's first just print out the arguments that we find. So, what we... Let's see if we now have our own main function or if we get some kind of conflict with Google test providing the main function. Okay, init Google test is probably in a namespace. No, don't. Okay, so we get the first, the first argument is the program name as expected and we do not get further ones. So let's open a command line and let's call the test ourselves and supply some arguments. Wow, a crash. <laughs> That's not so good. <laughs> Let's see if we can debug that. I thought I did it the right way. I didn't do it the right way, it seems. So we got it here, that's fine. Oh, I forgot, yeah, this is parenthesized the wrong way. That's the problem. I messed up my parentheses. That's a problem. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we do get the argument, so that's working. If we <coughs> let's pass something for gtest, uh, I actually don't know what the arguments are that we can pass. The, there must be something like a gtest. Ah, gtest list test, for example, we could try. Yeah, this works. And this is removed from the arguments. Does the filter work? Yeah, this works, but um, it actually does not execute anything. Just kills the filter is not filter positive pattern. So. Mm. 
Okay, ja, das ist Notebook. Desktop Store. Test filter does not work at all. Okay, this works. No. Does not work. Okay, this works. Ah, so probably it filters the, the whole string. Okay, but now I want to pass something like um, test seed equals one to three. Yeah, of course it does not set the seed, but it will soon. So this is, <coughs> sorry, this is fine. Let's keep this for debugging for now. Actually, I want to loop. So, <clears throat> let's guard against null pointers here. So, let's do arc if this is. And be careful about our correct parentheses. If this is a null pointer, <clears throat> which can happen, for example, under Unix at least, and probably not under Windows. And then we will continue. So let's compare the string. If this starts with test seed equals, how many characters are those? 12, yeah. Good guess. <clears throat> now we need to convert the tests. So we need, I think, a string to unsigned long long or something like that. Yes, string to unsigned long long. long long from arc plus 12 and end pointer we will need arbitrary base and so we expect end pointer to point <clears throat> to the terminating zero. If it doesn't, then we get some we got some garbage at the end. If the test seed number is okay. We will set our global
and that's it basically i mean we <coughs> probably want to complain about arguments that we do not understand and that's it Maybe we should complain about the uh, null pointer arguments too, because they are really ugly, nasty. We should never get them unless we have a malicious caller. So I'm getting hungry. So let's see if we can make this fourth seed work and then I'll take a break. How was this called? Uh, G random, G random initialized. <clears throat> okay, first, the first seed. This is this is a thing that affects only the one at the beginning. This is something different because this is for every test so in order to force it using as the seed for every individual test. Again, we will not deal with the very improbable case of having exactly a zero that we want to force if this happens once every few billion years or so we can deal with it then but definitely definitely We actually will initialize this to force seed because oh no we won't no um, the force test seed will override the force seed so uh, This this really needs some cleaning up. This is getting a bit confusing. So, but let's get things working first, and then we can then we can clean things up. We will do a forcing here and here. So let's make ourselves a, a helper. Maybe force seed. And 
that we pull in initializing. So this is the higher priority. And whenever we are forcing something, yeah. So where we see it is this, and then we, we might force it, maybe force it, where we see it, here we are initializing. Um, and here, <clears throat> we are not initializing. <laughs> yeah, I created a bit of a mess. <clears throat> Let's see if it works. Ah, okay. Yeah, we still need to <clears throat> we still need to ignore the the program argument. So it should be okay if we start always at one because zero is the program argument, program name argument. <clears throat> so this runs as expected. There's no forcing going on. We have a random integer that starts with 137 now. Let's run it another time and it should be something else. Yeah, it's something else. But now let's let's copy this here and let us invoke from the command line and say we want uh, say we want the test seed to be this you yes 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 we are forcing the seed that's nice and we get the same random integer, very nice. And this should also work if we do a test filter. Yeah, 
it works and we get the same integer also with the test filter even though um, we now have a we now have a different number of tests executed we get the same the same random integer Okay, with that, I will take a break and eat something. I consider this a success. So, we improved the test infrastructure quite a bit. We catch abort signals from assertions and so on. We have per test control over the random seed. Everything is nice. Okay, thanks for watching and see you later.